A senior Russian general fired for speaking out against Putin's war. Out front tonight obtaining remarkable audio of a Russian general in command of forces in southern Ukraine, right along that crucial front line near Zaporizhia. The general says he was relieved of being fired because he is now telling the truth about what's really happening on those front lines. Here is General Ivan Popov in a tape meant for the Russian public. Yeah, way me was. I had no right to lie. Therefore, I outlined all the problematic issues that exist today in the army in terms of combat work and support. I called a spade a spade. I drew attention to the most important tragedy of modern warfare. This is the lack of counter-battery combat, the absence of artillery reconnaissance stations, and the mass deaths and injuries of our brothers from enemy artillery. I also raised a number of other problems and expressed them all at the highest level, frankly and extremely harshly. In return, the senior commanders apparently felt some kind of threat in me, and quickly, in one light day, concocted an order, the Minister of Defense signed the order and got rid of me. Just to, just to give some perspective here, this is a general. General Popov is no ordinary military commander, right? He is, is commanding uh, all of those troops in the south. He is said to be popular with his troops. He tells them it's an honor to stand with them, he vows to do everything he can to make it easier for them to fight and to come back alive. And then he continued in this audio to accuse Russian leaders, all the way to the top, Russian leaders of betraying the military. As many commanders of divisional regiments said today, the servicemen of the armed forces of Ukraine could not break through our army from the front. Our senior commander hit us from the rear, treacherously and vilely decapitating the army at the most difficult and tense moment. Calling higher command the superiors traitors, accusing them of vilely decapitating their own troops. It is a stunning thing to see, because the reality is, you know, Popov and others know what the price could be. He could be out of a job, sure, he's out of a job, he's fired, but you know what, it could be a lot worse. Things could be a lot worse for him for speaking the truth. We don't know. It can be not ignored that at least one senior Russian military official, General Sergei Surovikin, who was an ally of Yevgeny Prigozhin, the Wagner boss, right, who led the armed rebellion against Putin, well, General Sarovikin hasn't been seen since the attempted coup. And a Russian lawmaker today said Sarovikin is, quote, taking a rest. General Wesley Clark, the former NATO Supreme Allied Commander, along with Roman Badanin, a Russian journalist and the founder and editor-in-chief of the investigative journalism site Project, which has been targeted by the Russian government and is funded by Putin critic Mikhail Khodorkovsky, who is in prison for a decade. Thanks very much to both of you. General Clark, let me just start with this major development tonight, right? We've obtained these things of this high-profile Russian general in command of the forces in southern Ukraine, right, which is really the front of the front line in the counteroffensive right now, fired for speaking out against Putin's war. He's doing so aggressively now, knowing that the cost could be death, right, possibly, who knows? What does this tell you? It tells me the Russian military is under a lot of stress, and, uh, and that's a good thing for the West, it's a good thing for Ukraine, and it's a good thing for the United States. I don't have any sympathy for the Russian chain of command or the generals. They're in a uh, war of aggression. Uh, there's a lot of innocent people that have been killed in Ukraine. It's a humanitarian disaster for the Ukrainians. Uh, and this general is, uh, he's not complaining about that. He's simply complaining that he can't kill more people. So be gone, be gone. It, it's a good thing. And let's get rid of the rest of them. And it's a good point you point out, right? It's not as if he's standing up on moral moral grounds or anything like that. He's standing up because they're not supporting him and the, the goals of the war, not because he questions those goals themselves. And in Roman, you know, on this front, you do have some new reporting on Yevgeny Prigozhin. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, General Sarvikin hasn't been seen since the coup. Prigozhin hasn't been seen since the failed coup two and a half weeks ago. What more can you tell us? Uh, yeah, uh, as, for, as for Prigozhin, we don't know for sure. His his location is still unknown, but we have a lot of indications that he's still inside Russia. Most probably, it's in Petersburg, his native city, where he has a lot a lot of real estate assets. Uh, so he definitely has some place there to leave. Uh, but what we need 
uh, we produce kind of a psychological portrait of Mr. Prigozhin. We try to answer the question what kind of person he is and how his personality could influence the mutiny that he started on June 24th. Uh, and we also studied the detailed history of his relationship with, with Putin. And the picture looks very gloomy. Prigozhin is a real sadist, a man really and truly obsessed with cruelty, uh, unimportant physical or verbal cruelty. Uh, for example, just a short example, you must understand that in Prigozhin's office in St. Petersburg, <coughs> in a very visible place, there was a photograph of the severe heads of African rebels who were killed by Wagner Group, presumably in the Central African Republic. Uh, just imagine, just a photograph of the head. Uh, we also found a lot of evidence of how Prigozhin personally beat his employees or gave orders for cruel punishment of ordinary people, including some Russian opposition leaders of their relatives. Uh, so it's also clear that Prigozhin has been personally associated with Putin for, for a very long time, at least since 1995, they know each other. Uh, so, and the last but not the least, um, yeah, sorry. No, no, I'm saying, you know, in general, what, what do you make of this sort of, as they're trying to piece together the portrait of the man, still not knowing where he is, but finding more and more things about it. For example, uh, at what Roman's reporting, the pictures that he had of people beheaded in Africa in Wagner's efforts there. We don't really know what happened with the alleged coup. 80% chance maybe it was real. Putin's used it to get rid of some people who were perhaps dissenting or disloyal to him. He still needs Prigozhin. Maybe Prigozhin's a chest piece that he puts in, in Belarus. Maybe Prigozhin takes command of Belarusian forces, blends them in with Wagner Group, opens a northern front. Maybe Prigozhin goes back to Africa. I think all this is sort of being worked out. Maybe, maybe this is a way of, of getting at Lukashenko, uh, giving Lukashenko a pat on the back for stopping the coup. Here, you take Prigozhin, and Prigozhin works for Putin underneath. We just don't know what this is. But remember, Putin is a trained intelligence agent. He, he's not a Western political leader. He operates on schemes. He has. He, he uses Mascarota, so so it, you can't assume it's straightforward. We're all saying he's weaker now, but uh, that's a consensus of Western opinion. But actually, he's used this to tighten up his grip. So so got to be careful in transposing our perceptions on what's happening really inside Russia. Yes, this war is still going on. Putin's is determined to win. It. Doesn't care how he wins it. Don't know what's going to happen with Prigozhin. Completely agree. Certainly a crucial point. And, and Roman, in terms of uh, Prigozhin's state of mind, you have some reporting that we, we haven't been able to verify here at CNN, but about what may be involved here in terms of his physical situation and, and his decision uh, for the rebellion and beyond. Yeah, we also learned that, well, according to two sources, uh, at least the two sources close to Prigozhin, some time ago, Prigozhin was being treated for abdominal cancer, and one of the sources told us that probably uh, this situation or his condition influenced the fact that he started the immunity. Uh, yeah, he, he was like, you know, he was out of control. All right, well, Roman, thank you very much for sharing your latest reporting with us. And General Clark, as always, thank you for your perspective.